rare that you've been diagnosed with mesothelioma. Oh yeah, six different rounds. Okay. I had calcified asbestos, asbestos in the lower three inches of my lung, the left lung. Well, it come in 50 pound bags, if I remember. And uh, with a centrifugal pump pulling it, and our centrifugal pumps pulling them, and, and you would take and tear those sacks open or cut those sacks open and pour it in that hopper. When you would open the bags, um, tell me what the material um, on the asbestos, tell me what the material looked like. Powdery. And when you dumped the bags, uh, what was that like? It was powdery and dust flying everywhere, and you throw the bag over here in a pile. What did the air around you look like when you poured the bis bis When you was mix mixing a lot of it up, it was dusty. And, and it would get all over you, and you certainly had to take a bath before you left the location. Um, did you have any respiratory equipment or protection? Never even thought about it. Did anybody tell you uh, that you needed to do it when you were handling it? I'm 58 and I've been murdered in slow motion. I was an active, vibrant woman who loved my life and the husband and friends who shared it with me. I loved hiking, riding, travel, snorkeling, and diving. I had a career I loved as a nurse case manager and a newly purchased home that I could honestly say was my dream house. First, asbestos is banned in many countries but not in the U.S. Second, asbestos use was widespread in construction prior to 1980, and millions of structures in the U.S. contain materials made with asbestos. Third, every year in the U.S. alone, thousands are diagnosed with asbestos-related diseases like mesothelioma, the fatal cancer that has killed me. And like me, many develop it from environmental or accidental exposure to asbestos. Fourth, current regulations of asbestos are based on science that is decades out of date. Regardless of what you may have heard or read, there is no safe form of asbestos and no safe level of exposure. Last, you need to know that funding and research for asbestos-related diseases, especially for mesothelioma, has lagged far behind other cancers with similar morbidity and mortality rates. Scientists still don't know why only certain individuals go on to develop disease, or why mesothelioma can escape detection and remain latent for so long before springing its deadly ambush. What's needed is a concerted and comprehensive research program and the money to fund it. It's a big problem that has been ignored for far too long while thousands died from simply breathing, and it won't be fixed with a few easy steps. What I'm urging you to do, 
for your own health and for the health of future generations is to start with step one, arm yourself with knowledge. A good place to begin is the Mesothelioma Applied Research Foundation at www.curemeso.org or check out the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization at www.asbestosdiseaseawareness.org. I leave it to you to take it from here. I must leave it to you because I won't be going on from here. Don't be fooled like I once was. This isn't something that only happens to other people, only to those who work directly with asbestos. This is everybody's problem. And if it happens to you or to someone you love, you'll hope a cure is waiting there for you. I know I sure did. Jersey Shore University Medical Center's David Clark is used to caring for sick patients. This past January, he became the patient. I remember hearing my, my doc say to me the first time, he said, Dave, I don't know how to tell you this. We didn't expect this, but you have cancer. And I immediately thought, and what I had heard was I'm going to die. The emergency department senior manager was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer that spread. A CAT scan revealed a golf ball sized tumor on his spine. The lifelong athlete quit smoking years prior. Days before the diagnosis, he was ice climbing. Aside from weight loss, the New Egypt resident had no symptoms. I had no idea. I did not expect. So um, it was rather devastating when we had first heard that. Meridian Cancer Care's Dr. Thomas Bauer says there are two main types of lung cancer, small cell, which tends to spread quickly, and non-small cell, the most common and one that can be operated on most frequently. It's related most likely, or uh, most commonly rather, to smoking. So probably 90% of all the cancers that we have are related to smoking. Still, non-smokers can get lung cancer, says the doctor. Some other risk factors include exposure to radon, asbestos, and other occupational hazards. The New Jersey Department of Health indicates there were 6,015 lung cancer cases in 2013. 4,016 residents died from the disease in 2012. I'm sure you've seen all the ribbons for the different cancers. The one for lung is either clear or white, and it's seen as the invisible killer. Dr. Bauer says too often patients dismiss symptoms because they've most likely experienced those conditions in the past, like coughing, chest or back pain or weight loss, which is why most patients are diagnosed at an advanced stage. More people are going to die uh, this year uh, in New Jersey and around the country from lung cancer than breast colon and prostate added together. Which is why the doctor insists prevention is key. His message, don't smoke. If you smoke now, quit. I think too many people uh, have a uh, prejudice against lung cancer. They look and identify the people have, having brought it on themselves. I think if we stop as a society and look, obesity, uh, high blood pressure, elevated cholesterol, a lack of exercise are all things that we do to ourselves that we could do better. So the person with lung cancer is no different than any other disease. Dr. Bauer and his team recommend a number of different treatments for lung cancer, including surgery, focused radiation, chemo, and other targeted therapies. David had radiation, surgery, and now he goes for chemo every three weeks, something he says he expects to do the rest of his life. Chemo is, is a very, very tough experience, but I've been very fortunate in that I've been able to manage it well. I think the most important thing if you have lung cancer is uh, never lose hope. I had to make a conscious decision. Am I going to allow this cancer to beat me or am I going to resign myself that I'm going to live with cancer? And I think live with cancer is the key word. To me, living with cancer is the ability to eat day, enjoy that day, 
And to me, that's a win. In Neptune, I'm Lauren Wonko, NJTV News. You're about to hear from Harriet, or Harry as she prefers to be known, talking about what it was like to be diagnosed with cancer, and how it affected her outlook on life. I'm taking a walk along a cliff-top path, there is a fresh breeze on my face, and the sun is warming my back. There are gulls swooping overhead. The blue sea stretches to the horizon broken by shards of light. Glittering reflections fragmented by waves shimmering with movement. Life feels good, and I'm contemplating what lies beyond the horizon. What might it be like to cross the sea? What could the future hold? Then a rock moves beneath my foot, and twisting an ankle I stumble, falling to my knees at the cliff edge. Putting my hands down to steady myself, I look in horror down the cliff face to the waves crashing over the ferocious rocks below. The cliff top which had felt so solid as I ambled along crumbles beneath my fingertips, little clods of soil tumbling down to the foaming water below. I freeze in place, too terrified to move, lest I further disturb the ground and cause a catastrophic landslip. My eyes are riveted to the cliff face noting every bone-breaking protrusion. The sea alternately pummels then sucks hungrily at the rocks below. No thought now of sailing serenely across the ocean. The only futures I see are those where I traverse the cliff face accelerated by gravity to my doom. My stomach feels as though it has already fallen, leaving me hollow. My breath comes in shallow gulps. My heart is fluttery, and a low-pitched groan reverberates in my chest before escaping. Millimeter by millimeter I shuffle backwards, planning each tiny movement carefully, lifting each limb with painstakingly gentle slowness ready to stop at the slightest tremble of the earth beneath me. My mind is frozen now, fixated on the process of retreat and nothing else. A geological age passes and I return to awareness finding myself twenty feet back from the edge. Taking a long shuddering breath I start to shiver uncontrollably. Getting shakily to my feet I turn my back to the path and the sea. Keeping my head down and my eyes fixed on the ground I retreat inland, leaving hopes and dreams of the future for others to explore. <laughs> 